Hi, everybody. I'm Joshua from the Streamlit team, and I'm here today to talk about app test and the new app testing framework that we've introduced in Streamlit 1.28. I'm really excited about this as it's a feature that I've wanted myself for a long time and one that we've heard from the community uh, to make it much easier to write automated tests for your app that actually test the UI logic, uh, which you can then run locally in PyTest or uh, with a continuous integration tool like GitHub Actions to validate that your app is working the way that you expect as you continue to work on it. Here, I've got a really simple app and I'm gonna show you how, to, how easy it is to write tests for an app like this um, and extend them as you add new features. So we've got a really simple app here that just takes in a password. Um, and if the password matches, then uh, I can see the success message. Otherwise I see a warning. Uh, so if I've just got my foobar password um, and I run this app, then I see, you know, got that title of the password. I can type in something that doesn't match, this can change. And then when I type in that foobar, then I see my success message. Um, so the simplest test that I could run for this is just testing. Um, and I would recommend adding this for some of our apps basically uh, just a test for an exception on the first run. So I've imported my app test class from the testing namespace uh, and defined a test in sort of the normal Python testing format, just any function that starts with test. Uh, I'm able to create an instance of app test uh, from the file and just told it the name of this password file um, that you can see here is in the same uh, directory. And then I'm able to run this test and just do an assert that when the app runs, uh, it does not have an exception printed on the screen. Um, so just to show what that looks like, I'll just run PyTest here, and uh, it's going to run that, that test that I have to find and see that it passed, and, and it ran that in about a second and validated that for me. So if I wanted to do something like this um, before having this tool, uh, really there's only a couple of options um, that we see most commonly, obviously manual testing, so actually going in and trying it out. Oh, the app's gone, so I get that error. Um, the other things that you can do is like factoring out this logic. So if I factored out like just the function for checking the password, maybe test that separately um, or use a heavyweight kind of browser testing framework like Selenium, Cypress, Playwright, something like that, uh, which are great tools um, for, you know, for the use cases that they have, but uh, it's a little bit heavyweight for a Streamlit app. So we wanted to make something a little bit simpler. Um, to show a slightly more complex test. So say I wanted to um, test out the actual password logic here. Um, I can do that really easily by uh, adding a secret um, to tell it what the password should be. And then with this testing framework, I can grab this password text input um, and then set a value for it, um, run it again and see, the, uh, see that the warning would be printed. Um, so if I have this here, now I can try that again and see that it still passed. And for example, just to show what a failure would look like, uh, if I put in the same password, I should now expect to see the success message. Um, so if I run this again, I expect this is going to fail. And it does. So it, it can't find that warning, so I get an error. Um, OK, so let's, uh, let's try adding a new feature and just see what, what this would look like to write tests for that. Um, so what I'm going to do is add a select box and be able to select the success message and then test that that works the way that I expect. Okay, so I've got my select box here um, for my success icon. Um, so what I want to happen is when I change this, then the icon here in the success message changes. Um, you might notice I have a bug because I didn't actually um, change the icon to use that new variable. Um, so let's see if we can find that in a test and then fix it. So. Uh, first, I'm going to just run the app again, just to show um, I get my success message. And then I've also got the sidebar where I can set the thing to the different values. Um, okay, so I have written a test here um, to test my success icon logic. Uh, so I can see that when I set the password in the text input to match what's in the secret, I should see this congrats message. And then if I change the select box to select the rocket, then I should see the rocket icon for the select message after I run again. Um, so let's run this test and see what happens. So as we pointed out, we still have that incorrect logic. So we saw that the first test still passed uh, for the incorrect check, um, but our success icon test is failing uh, because we see this mismatch. We're printing the tada 
uh, where we expect the rocket. So let's see if we can fix that. Um, so I'm going to go in here now and change the app logic to use that success icon. And I think this is going to fix our test. So uh, let's find out. Great. So you can see that our automation is working. Um, and now this test is baked in, so I can make further changes to the app and continue to test that this use case works the way that I expect. Awesome. So that was a basic example. Um, now I'll talk just a little bit about sort of the API and some of the things that are available with app testing. So um, here's the docs. We have this API reference uh, that's available now. And you can see um, some of the things that are available on the app test class, for example. Um, you can initialize, initialize this with uh, from file, which is what I showed in this example. So I'm just passing in the name uh, or the path to the file where the app is, is uh, app code is located. And, uh, but you could also pass in a string of a full app code or a function if for some reason you wanted to test some logic, um, some limited logic. And with this, uh, we expose secrets, session state, query param. Um, you can also do get for particular element types directly, uh, as well as that run method that we were using. If you want to change the timeout, the default is three seconds. So if your app needs more than three seconds to run, you can, you can configure that. Uh, and then we have, yeah, basically all of the supported elements. Um, we don't have coverage for everything uh, in 1.28, so we'll expect to add that in a future release. And um, yeah, just to show some of the testing, some of the classes have uh, some additional, um, you know, particular methods like being able to click on a button or, um, you know, yeah, to check on a checkbox. Uh, so those are listed, but pretty much everything. If you can set a value, you can you can call set value, and you can always retrieve the current value. Um, so those are sort of the kind of the base methods that are available. Um, and yeah, there's more more to be discovered here in the documentation as you're getting started. So I'm just going to quickly show a couple of other examples of a couple of specific apps that we built some tests that can help get you started. Um, so the first one is this sophisticated palette app. Uh, so this is one of our favorite community apps um, that was built uh, quite a while ago by uh, Siavash that we built some tests for. Um, so this app, basically you can put in a piece of art or another picture and it will pull out um, the prominent palette colors for that um, using some machine learning algorithm. So uh, I can pick some different pieces of art and see those colors. Uh, I can also do things like changing the palette size to um, reduce the number of colors that are being generated. So now we're down to just five and uh, do other things like that. I can also put in the image and a URL to an image. Um, so this is a bit of a complex app and a useful one to test as the uh, there's quite a bit of code. Um, and it's a nice one to test in the UI directly because of some of these kind of configuration changes, seeing how that renders. So just to show some of the tests that you can build for this um, that we built. So once again, we've got kind of that basic smoke test that I showed. I really encourage adding this to uh, quite a lot of apps. Uh, and then we've also added tests, for example, for checking, you know, if I change that palette size, that the number of color pickers will change or, um, you know, making other changes like that, changing the sample size, seeing that things stay consistent. Uh, I can also test that, you know, when I actually change from the default artwork, then I see different colors or uh, testing that the URL loading works the way that I expect. So I dropped in the Streamlit logo here um, and see that I can generate new colors that way. Uh, as well as testing some of the different models that are available and making sure that they're generating different colors. Um, so these are just some examples to help you get started and to kind of show some more things that are in the API. Uh, one other one that we added that was probably of interest, so folks may be familiar with our LLM examples app, which has some of the basic LLM use cases. Uh, so just to show you know, how that works, you know, we've got our basic uh, chatbot case here, can generate some shark jokes. Um, and then uh, the LangChain quick start, we also have some tests for. So just to show that, I can get some quick advice for learning how to code, um, which will be generated. And this is a good case of an app where we're you know iterating regularly. There's a number of pages here. Some of the underlying libraries are changing. Um, so it's useful to be able to have some tests on this to make sure that it's working the way that we expect. Um, so we added a couple of tests, and one other thing that this shows uh, that I think is really cool is how easy it is to mock um, outside calls into your app using the existing tools that are just provided by Python. Um, so in this case, 
we're using patch from the unit test.mock library in Python. So we're able to patch that call into OpenAI and provide our own results so that you're not having to call OpenAI directly whenever you're running these tests. Um, so just to show how that works, um, you know, again, we're able to set a value for our chat input, test that the open API key piece isn't working uh, until you set that. And then I can use this uh, return value on the OpenAI underscore create um, input argument that's being picked up by this patch to set the return value that I want uh, to get it to return the joke and then validate that I'm seeing the chat messages with the joke show up the way that I expect. And similarly with that lang chain example, I'm able to, yeah, basically do the same thing, right? Customize the response um, and put that back. So just to show, it was also really easy to add these tests into our continuous integration with GitHub Actions for this repo. So what we were able to do, I'll just show the workflow file. And this was just taken basically from the standard uh, building and testing Python app workflow that GitHub Actions provides. So there's a link to the tutorial here if you wanna walk through that more. Um, but basically we're able to, in this action, just install um, PyTest. We're also doing some linting and just run the test this way. And that's really all we need to pick up those app tests. And I'll just show after we merge this, now we have this actions in our workflow. Uh, so I can see that workflow run and click in and see that it ran my tests and see that passed. And it will also you know, give me errors on a new pull request or anything for this repo if these are not passing. So it's really simple and straightforward. Um, that's it. That's what we wanted to show. We're really excited for this feature and we're really excited to see how the community uses it and looking forward to making more improvements in the future. Thank you very much.